In this video, I will present our recent work on concretely efficient zero-knowledge arguments for arithmetic circuits and their application to lattice-based cryptography. My name is Carsten Baum and this is joint work with Ariel Nov. The paper will appear at the PKC 2020 conference and the full version of our paper can be found on ePrint on the link shown below. First, let me recap what a zero-knowledge argument of knowledge actually is. For this, we will be in a situation where the prover and the verifier which both know a certain statement. The prover will try to convince the verifier that that statement is actually true. To do so, the prover and the verifier will exchange a set of messages, at the end of which the verifier is going to decide whether or not to accept that interaction. In order to be a zero-knowledge argument of knowledge, this interaction will have to have three properties. First of all, it must be complete. Second, it must have knowledge soundness. And third, it must provide the zero knowledge property. Completeness means that if the statement is true and the prover has a witness for it, then a prover will always be able to convince a verifier about the truth of the statement and the verifier will always accept at the end of the protocol. Soundness means that if the statement is not true, then a prover will only be able to, ex to convince a verifier with negligible probability. In particular, knowledge soundness means that there exists a certain uh, algorithm called the extractor, such that if we have a prover that can convince a verifier uh, with a certain probability, then the extractor can extract a witness for the statement from that prover. Last but not least, Zero knowledge is a property that intuitively means that the verifier does not learn anything from this interactive protocol beyond the fact that the statement is true. More concretely, it means that we can construct an algorithm called a simulator that outputs transcripts that are distributed as they are in the interactive protocol, except that the simulator does not get access to the witness which the prover actually has. More concretely, uh, let's assume that the prover and the verifier both know a circuit C and an output Y of the circuit and moreover the prover has a witness W and it wants to convince the verifier that it knows this W and that C when applied to W outputs Y. And the whole construction is called an argument of knowledge because we assume that the prover is computationally bounded. In this work we present two main results. First of all a new zero knowledge argument of knowledge protocol which is based on the so-called MPC in the head technique. Our work is concretely efficient in the sense that the communication in our protocol might not be sublinear in the circuit size as it is in other protocols, but it has small, very concrete constants and it's very fast when implemented. And we only use symmetric key primitives, which means that our solution is plausibly post-quantum secure. We then show how to apply our protocol to a problem in lattice-based cryptography. Namely, we show how to construct a protocol to convince a verifier that a certain SIS problem has a solution with low prover time and moderate proof size over in comparison to other solutions. In order to understand how our protocol actually works, let me first introduce the concept of multi-party computation or MPC for short. In MPC, a set of servers uh, has some certain inputs, WI, and they run an interactive protocol uh, over a certain network, uh, after which they each obtain an output. Uh, now, what we want to have is that if we feed the individual inputs of uh, each server into a circuit, then these outputs will appear as the outputs of the circuit. Now, a simple solution for that would be that each party simply uh, broadcasts its input to all the other parties. So, let's make um, the whole thing more interesting. So, in MPC, we require, first of all, that if the parties learn the output, then uh, it is this output of the computation. That means that even if we have servers that um, try to disturb the computation, they will not be able to uh, make an honest server output another value and think that this output is correct. Moreover, um, in an MPC protocol, we furthermore require, require privacy or T privacy, where T privacy means that no T parties can learn anything beyond their inputs and outputs from the protocol. Meaning that they can run the computation and they, they can derive no information about the inputs of the other parties by only looking at the values that they've seen in the transcript of the protocol. A well-known paradigm for 
constructing a zero knowledge uh, protocol is the so-called MPC in the head paradigm. There, a prover will simulate in its head uh, an MPC protocol between multiple servers. So it will simulate these servers. Uh, it will first secret share its witness uh, of the statement to, to all of the uh, servers in the multi-party computation. And then uh, these servers will run an uh, evaluation of the circuit C and this whole interaction only happens uh, in the head of the prover. Then after this is done, the prover will commit to uh, the views of the different servers. That means it commits to both the input shares and the randomness and also the exchange messages of each of the servers individually. And it will send these commitments to the verifier. The verifier will then ask the prover to open a certain subset of let's say T views of this uh, multi-party computation interaction. And then the prover will open these commitments uh, based on the choices that the verifier has made. Then the verifier will inspect these views that he sees, namely the uh, secret shares of the inputs, the randomness and the messages. And he will uh, check if all of these messages that were exchanged were consistent. He will check that each of the servers will have acted consistently with its input and its randomness and the messages that it has and that the correct output was obtained. And then the verifier will accept, otherwise it will reject. Now, MPC in the head has been around uh, since the seminal work of Ishai et al. in 2007. And the first practical implementation of this paradigm has been provided in the ZKB protocol and the ZKB++ work uh, that followed upon it. Um, Furthermore, uh, the Ligero protocol showed how to instantiate the uh, MPC in the head paradigm with sublinear communication complexity. So this is uh, asymptotically less than what we have in our solution. Um, in 2018, uh, the KKW protocol showed how to combine MPC in the head with the so-called pre-processing paradigm, which has been very popular in the uh, area of MPC for a long time. Now, in comparison to these previous works, we generalize this preprocessing based MPC in the head and we show how to use this uh, more specifically for protocols that run over large prime fields. In MPC with preprocessing, we assume that before the actual MPC protocol runs, there is a trusted third party that samples correlated randomness according to a certain distribution and it then gives each of the individual servers a share of that randomness in secret. This preprocessing is supposed to be input independent and it will allow us to lower the cost of the actual MPC protocol in terms of either communication or computational complexity. Now, it's not very straightforward to apply this paradigm in the zero knowledge setting for MPC in the head simply because we assume in the MPC with preprocessing that this server who shared the randomness is a trusted third party and that the randomness is therefore correct. Now, in the MPC in the head, we will have to assume that the prover will simulate this trusted third party, but then it's uh, not clear that this secret uh, sample data is actually correct, so it gives the prover more opportunities to cheat, and fixing this is uh, what is important when constructing MPC in the head with preprocessing. Popular application of preprocessing to an MPC protocol is in order to allow for multiplications of secret shares values. For this, let's denote by V in brackets a secret sharing of a value V, and we will say that ABC uh, with brackets is written here is a random multiplication triple if A and B are indeed random and if C is A times B. Now, a straightforward approach is uh, to multiply X and Y that are secret shared directly using A, B, and C. This uh, is a deterministic process and this will always succeed, but it will require that A, B, and C is always correct. So this is a strong uh, claim that we make about the preprocessed data. Uh, on the other hand, there exists a technique that allows us to verify if three values X, Y, Z are actually correctly multiplied using a random multiplication triple A, B, and C. And if either of them 
is actually not uh, does actually not follow this multiplication relation, then this process will fail with probability one minus one over the field size. Now that means that we will be able to use uh, pre-processed data that is not always correct by adding additional randomness to the MPC protocol. Intuitively, it could be said that the protocol by Katz et al. Uh, follows the first approach that was outlined before. Namely, the prover will first generate uh, correlated randomness by committing to random multiplication triples, and it sends these commitments to the verifier. The verifier will then ask to open a subset of these triples, and the prover will then uh, at the same time uh, decommit this chosen subset to prove to the verifier that the multiplication triples are correctly formed. It will then run in its head a uh, multi-party computation on the, using the remaining triples and will commit to the views of the parties as outlined before. Then the verifier will ask to open a certain subset of the views of the parties. Uh, these will be uh, decommitted by the prover and the verifier will then first of all check that the triples were correct, that the views were consistent, and then that the output is correct as well. And this uses a cut and choose paradigm because uh, the prover will first generate all these commitments and then uh, in an interaction, a so-called cut and choose protocol, the verifier will check some of that and the rest will be used in the actual protocol. In our protocol, we instead follow the second approach that was outlined before. Namely, first of all, the prover commits uh, towards the verifier to random multiplication triples, but also to an evaluation of the circuit. Um, and for that, it commits to secret shares uh, of all the virus of the circuit. Then the verifier will ask the prover to use certain randomness for a verification computation on these secret shares. And the prover will then simulate in its head a verification computation on these secret shares with this randomness and it will commit again to the views of the parties. The prover will then be asked by the verifier to open a subset of the views and it will decommit those views. Now the verifier will first of all check that these views are consistent as before and it will check that both the actual, actual computation of the circuit will output that uh, the circuit is uh, correct and the witness is correct and it will check that the verification of the multiplication in our case um, showed that all the multiplications were correct. Now, after this, it will decide to accept or reject uh, accordingly. And this is uh, in comparison to the protocol by Katz et al, a sacrificing based approach in the sense that we sacrifice one random multiplication triple to check one multiplication in the actual circuit. As was shown, both cut and choose and sacrificing can thus be used to construct an MPC in the head protocol. Uh, both in the actual MPC protocol will have similar communication cost per multiplication gate that is evaluated in the circuit. And the MPC protocol that is thus used has both free addition and multiplication by constant gates. This is important for our application. Over rings or small fields, sacrificing as we um, presented isn't that beneficial. The reason is that the success probability uh, of the sacrificing is proportional to the field size. And if the field size is small, uh, then obviously uh, the advantages are not that big. On the other hand, if we do computation over a prime field, then the soundness of the sacrificing actually uh, allows us to have less repetitions in the MPC in the head protocol and thus we get less com overall communication. When using the MPC in the head paradigm as we do, then the communication complexity uh, of the overall protocol will directly depend of the communication complexity of the simulated MPC protocol that is simulated in the head of the prover. Now, if we have free multiplications uh, with constants and free additions, then this means that we can actually construct a low overhead uh, zero knowledge argument for the so-called SIS problem. In the SIS problem, the prover will have a matrix A and a solution T, uh, which the verifier also has, and it wants to convince um, the verifier that it has a certain value S, a, uh, a vector S, such that A times S is T, and furthermore, that S is small, 
meaning that this is below a bound beta that the verifier also has. Now it's clear that um, this uh, is a very easy task if we only wanted to show that a times s is t and the hardness comes from the fact that s has to be small. And this is a crucial building block for all kinds of uh, post-quantum lattice-based cryptographic protocols. So it's very important to have efficient protocols for proving um, such a statement. In order to demonstrate how to apply our zero knowledge protocol to the sys problem, let me first introduce the binary sys problem. In binary sys, the proof will want to convince the verifier that it knows the value s such that a times s is t and that s is actually a bit string. Now, if the prover secret shares S uh, to the parties in the MPC protocols, um, then the first of the two uh, steps in the proof are actually for free because uh, we can do free linear operations uh, on secret shares values because the matrix A is a public value known to both the prover and the verifier. So all we actually have to take care of in the proof is to show that S is a bit string. Now, showing that S only consists of bits is easy because each value SI will only be a bit if and only if SI times SI minus 1 equals 0. Now, that means uh, if we follow this very straightforward approach, we obtain a circuit that has M multiplication gates. So, this is the first uh, step of, of uh, implementing this. Now, for arbitrary bounds, this can be obtained by constructing general range proofs where since the prover knows the binary composition of each value si, it can just prove that each value of its binary decomposition is a bit, and then we can compute the linear combination of these bits uh, in the MPC protocol, which is free, and then perform the multiplication with that with the matrix A, which is also free. So more generally, using a standard range proof, this will mean m times log beta multiplication gates. So this is a very direct way of applying our uh, protocol to the SIS problem. The outline solution only uses standard multiplication gates. So an obvious question is if one can actually do better uh, by, for example, uh, having a circuit with less multiplication gates or by using special gates. And in our work, we actually show that this is possible. First of all, bit tests can be done using square gates instead of multiplication gates where square gates have less overhead in the uh, pre-processing stage. Furthermore, for the binary sys problem, we show a circuit that just uses one multiplication gates instead of m multiplication gates, where m is the length of the input vector. And for general sys, we show a circuit that has one multiplication gate, but where the proof is approximate, meaning that the proof does not give the exact bound beta, but something that is a bit bigger than beta. Mind that many proofs that are uh, done in the SIS uh, setting uh, only give such an approximate uh, solution. We also show a solution for the general sys problem that does not use any multiplication gates whatsoever. Now the main idea that we use uh, to actually construct this is what we call circuit sampling. The idea of the circuit sampling process is that the prover and the verifier together negotiate the circuit that will finally be evaluated by the MPC protocol. Here, the hope is that if we have a large number of possible circuits to choose from, we can choose a class of circuits that overall have a smaller uh, complexity and thus we can reduce the communication complexity of our protocol. This will work as follows. First, the prover will commit to an extended witness, meaning from the, com from the witness that the prover has uh, for the original circuit, it will compute an extended version of it that contains some additional information, which could be helpful during the evaluation of the negotiated circuit. Then the prover and the verifier together will pick such a circuit, and then the circuit will be applied to the extended witness as before. Now, the idea will be that a prover might try to tailor its extended witness to one specific circuit instance, but if there is a large number of possible such circuits, then a prover cannot uh, alter or make up a witness that would make all of these circuits uh, evaluate to uh, a positive outcome, while at the same time, um, it does not have a witness to begin with. This in itself is not necessarily straightforward. 
for two reasons. First of all, as mentioned, soundness uh, might be complicated in particular, as we will want to have that also the prover will have a say when choosing such a circuit for reasons that will be clear later. And furthermore, we will still have to make sure that the zero knowledge property of the protocol is preserved. As an example of the circuit sampling technique, consider the range proofs that we have to do in our protocol in order to verify that a witness indeed is valid for an SIS instance. There, for the range proofs uh, to go through, we will have to test where, whether input values are bits, and this is done by multiplying these input values with uh, the input value minus one, and then testing whether the outcome of this product is indeed zero. So if we have n input values and we want to check that all of them are bits, this will mean that we will have to do n multiplications. And for these n multiplications, we will have to originally generate n random multiplication triples in the preprocessing. Both these multiplications and this uh, preprocessing will be part of the communication that has to be done to the verifier. So can we do better? And yes, indeed, we can by amortizing these bit tests. For an amortized bit test that tests if all values uh, of W are bits simultaneously, we have instead the following solution. First of all, let us define a polynomial f of degree n minus 1, where f at point i evaluates to w i, uh, meaning f at point 1 evaluates to the first element of the witness, and so on and so forth. Now, this polynomial is uniquely defined by the input w. And furthermore, we can evaluate this polynomial at any arbitrary uh, value in the field um, using Lagrange interpolation. Now, Lagrange interpolation only requires us to perform linear operations, and this is for free in the MPC scheme. Moreover, let us additionally define a polynomial G, which at point i evaluates to wi minus 1. Now, additionally, as part of the extended witness, we will share a polynomial H. And we will then have to test if indeed H is the product of F and G. Now, this can simply be done using only one multiplication where the verifier chooses an arbitrary uh, value from the field. And then the prover will evaluate H, F and G at that point. It will then multiply F at that point with G at that point and subtract it from H at the value chosen by the verifier. And if the output of this computation is zero, then by the Schwarz-Zippel lemma, with overwhelming probability, a polynomial h of degree two and minus two is indeed the product polynomial of f and g. Now, this helps us to establish that both f and g, if defined as above, uh, imply that all the values of w are bits, as follows. By the fact that evaluation of a polynomial at a certain point is, an, is a homomorphism, we only have to check now that h at points 1 to point n is indeed 0. But this actually comes for, to us for free. Namely, we can simply construct h this way because the verifier already knows that h must have this specific shape. Now that means that in order to send h as part of the extended witness, we will only have to send n minus 1 additional values. Um, that means that we will have a larger extended witness, which now has length 2n instead of length n, but we will only have to do one multiplication. Now, multiplications are the specifically costly part in our proof system, so this will help us save communication. For details of that, please uh, have a look at the paper. Um, now, uh, we will also make other uh, techniques available uh, for SIS in our paper. In particular, we showed that rejection sampling uh, can be done if both the prover and the verifier uh, have a say in which circuit will be used. And for that, I also want to refer to the full version of our paper, which can be found on ePrint as mentioned before. We implemented our protocol and tested uh, how feasible it is in practice in terms of runtime. Um, for that, we implemented the binary sys solution, uh, but the unoptimized version where each bit of the witness individually is tested uh, using a multiplication. For that, we used an Amazon C59X large instance, uh, both for the prover and for the verifier individually. And we implemented our protocol for different uh, parameters. Namely, we let the fields be of size from 15 bits up to 61 bits. 
and the matrix A uh, of, of dimensions 256 times 1024, meaning compressing from 1024 uh, input values over ZQ to 256 up to 4096 to 512. Now observe that in our protocol, the matrix A is unstructured, meaning that we cannot use uh, additional techniques for efficient uh, polynomial multiplication. For example, if we choose the largest instance that we measured for, namely if we have a modulus of size 61 bits and we have a matrix that shrinks from 4096 to 512 field elements, and if we want to have 40 bits of soundness in our interactive argument, then the protocol runs in 1.2 seconds uh, if both the prover and the verifier have only a single thread uh, at their disposal. Now, if each of them use 16 or more threads, then as can be seen down there in the graphic, the runtime uh, shrinks to around 250 milliseconds for the overall protocol. Now, we observed in our implementation that over 90% of the runtime is actually due to the multiplication with the unstructured matrix A which in our experiment was chosen uniformly at random. If we would instead have a uh, as a ring SIS instance, then using efficient uh, NTT algorithms, we could probably have a much, much lower runtime of the overall uh, argument. Now, uh, depending on if one prefers a faster argument or less communication, uh, one has to choose the parameters for the uh, MPC instances differently. If one chooses more parties uh, per MPC instance, that means that each of the MPC instances uh, has uh, a better soundness guarantee. One needs less MPC instances that have to be communicated to the verifier. This overall gives less communication, but it increases the uh, computation time because the prover and the verifier now have to run more parties in their head. If one instead uses less parties per MPC instance, then this gives a better soundness uh, this gives a, a lower soundness guarantee for each of the individual MPC instances, but um, this then leads to less uh, overall uh, computation time because one just repeats this more and more often, and this uh, is nice uh, when done with multi-threading. To conclude, our paper makes the following three contributions. First, we generalize the MPC in the head with preprocessing paradigm in order to support both protocols with cut and choose and with sacrificing. We give full proofs for both of these approaches. Second, we show how to apply our protocol to the SIS problem in order to construct an efficient interactive argument system. Third, we introduce uh, some new ideas in order to lower the communication complexity uh, for the SIS setting. And in order to prove security for these techniques, we construct a new approach called circuit sampling, which might be of independent interest. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention.